Hello everyone and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I really regret letting Starlight talk me into this, but I have no idea what's going on and I'm quite intrigued. So last episode, it was quite dull, I'll be honest, but you know, let's go into it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Nasuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Nasuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Nasuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I... I know that. I just meant... The language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean... Uh, you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um... Well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Royd did too. Oh god, I forgot I call myself Royd. <laughs> so based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I didn't expect to change any time soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Mm. And Roy liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Nasuki suddenly stands up. Oh! I didn't realise you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... Oh, she's gone very blush. Look at her. What the hell has happened to the music? Uh, you... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Rod appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ugh. Uh, um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Roy started showing up. Oh, here we go. N Nasuki! Oh, yeah, she's really blushed now. Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! Jesus Christ, both of them said that then. I don't like fighting guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me, as if they just noticed I was standing there. Royd! She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of me in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should just jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to a Roy. Oh, God. What? Wait. There's no reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning to the most effectively. 
avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Royd? Um, Maybe? Well, Jesus Christ, both of them. How did I get dragged into this in the first place? I don't know, I wanted a cupcake. It's not like I know anything about writing. Uh, not true, I have two books, fun fact. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So, of course, that's going to be... Fuck. Um, Natsuki is crazy. Yori is crazy. Sayori! Na Natsuki. Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yori. Yori? But Yori's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! Eh? Yeah? Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this too? Royd. Well, that's her problem. This is about her. I, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah. Unless Sayori wants to tell Yori what a stuck-up jerk she's being. Ooh, sass. She would never. It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself right now? This is exactly why... Exactly why nobody likes... Stop it! <laughs> Natsuki, Yuri, you guys are my friends. I just wanted everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Be because... Well... Also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same they've always been. I disagree. Big and beautiful. Oh, God, Starlight, what have you got me into? Sayori. Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yori rushes off. Fucking hell, what is she, the Flash? Nasuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So... This is why Sayori is Vice President. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organise things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As President, that's kind of embarrassing for me. <laughs> nah. It's not like I can blame you. Yes, you can. She did jack shit. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I have a few words. Well, a few. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. Oh god, please tell me that's not foreshadowing. Please tell me that's not foreshadowing. That, that sounds really bad right there. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knot. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk 
to her a little more. I don't know, some it's a bit odd, if you ask me, about Monica, because I barely heard her speak apart from now, when no one else is around. No witnesses. Is she? Are you going to murder me? Are you going to murder me in the cupboard? Anyway. <laughs> okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun! Well, I would say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Royd, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. <laughs> awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you would learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I don't even want to impress anyone. I don't want to be here! I nod to myself with newfound determination. Royd! Ready to walk home? Sure. Let's go. Hee <laughs> hee. Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. Wow, am I really much of a dick in this universe? I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori! About what happened earlier. Eh, uh, what do you mean? You know, between Yori and Nasuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew! <sighs> you know, Royd, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone it is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... Hee <laughs> hee! Every day is going to be so much fun! <sighs> It looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kinds of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? Oh, player time! We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulders. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. <laughs> Okay! Yeah. Let's do this. Oh god, it's poem time. Uh, save. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, extreme. Um. Rainbow Massacre Nibble Pain Flee Pleasure Jump Doki Doki Tragedy Peace! Boop! Sticky! Desire! Disaster! Wrath! Lust! Raindrops! Anger! Twirl! Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. 
Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Royd! Yo, Sayori. Oh, God. Who says yo? Apart from Gurr, and he's American, so I'll let him off on that. Please don't hate me for saying that. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Hee <laughs> hee! I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in the mood, Sayori. But I guess it's always the simple things with you. Anyway, speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No. Eh? That, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Uh, why is that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, <laughs> Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So, either you were not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you planned to conveniently forget that you spent all your money. So, that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Wow, I'm a real dick. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening, eh? Her face is always in a book, as always. <laughs> I wasn't listening or anything. I was just... Something in my book. Yuri! Tell Roy to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Jesus Christ, suffering is retribution? When did this turn into the freaking Bible? Uh, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh, <laughs> I really like it when you speak me your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to ex accept the revolution? What the hell? What the hell is going on in this? Retribution? That! Still coming for you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of Zol, isn't there? No, I just am the devil. Hee <laughs> hee! Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... But, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Nesuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Pop! Kaiju! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A, a cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. It, is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that's one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. 
It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Na Nasuki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy! Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. It's so good. Hmm? Sayori has suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Nasuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah! Yours looks really good too, Nasuki. Can I try it? Jeez! Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah? Why do you think I gave you that one? <sighs> Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Hee <laughs> hee. Sari gets out of her seat and goes behind Nasuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Nasuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. Um. She only suddenly leans down and takes a big bite out of Nasuki's cookie. You greedy little monster. Hey, hey. Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Your and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Uh, Nasuki glances round. Monica isn't in the club room. Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. Probably because she's murdering someone. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just has something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Uh, You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. I beg to differ. You know, combined you got a chef, a wonderful personality, and... Them. I can't say it, but you see where my mouth is. Them. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? <laughs> well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I was aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, I don't really. I just kind of started recently. Guilty! Very guilty! I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Royd. Oh god, she's doing the mum robos. She's gonna stab me. What are you holding behind there? Is that knife? Monica smiles sweetly. <laughs> I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share it once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. <laughs> Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, 
Not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie! Yori is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Roid! Roid! Suddenly, Sayori comes up to me. I'm gonna get some supplies from another classroom. Want to come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up. Me and Monica, we're gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Ah, are you going with Roy to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'll be happy to go with him. Oh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay! Ready, Roid? Yep. Let's go! Sayori and I exit the classroom. I follow behind her, Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey Sayori! What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're going to do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is going to take turns on stage and recite their favourite poems. Ah? That sounds... Kinda dull. Right! You're not thinking about it in the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. Like, you say all the lines of the poem, like... Between my feet. The last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots. Caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. That doesn't sound like a flower. That sounds... Bad. <sighs> but to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. Sayori... How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Uh, you meanie. I'm working super duper hard on this, you know. Ah, uh, I know, I know. I just meant that in a... It's pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'm so excited! The festival is going to be so much fun. Sayori spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Royd, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. Oh, it's a bit like my friend Swim. It's pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. She's going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet 
and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayori put a box full of crayons on the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the colour names. Well, colour was spelt wrong. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favourite colour. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah! I dropped one by accident! Kay! Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. Comment down below if you have done that. I've done that more than enough times. Hence why I'm partially brain dead. And I mean brain dead as in stupid. Calm down. <sighs> she falls onto the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead! Sayori clutches her forehead. Geez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. Ah. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow! Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the centre of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Royd, where would we have had ice at this time? Ah, uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Oh, God. Is this why Starlight wanted me to play it? Because it mentioned a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Oh, okay. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and I run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchase that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori, here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your head, idiot! Ah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Royd, this kind of reminds you're growing up, doesn't it? Eh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time. I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like, I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do the things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know. Did I really do that? Yeah. You don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I always... I'm always so focused on my games that I didn't really pay enough attention to you. So, in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time too. If I wasn't rushing 
you to get out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Royd. I don't think you realise it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to it, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Royd, I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Did you think that it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll end up for college, or after that. So it wouldn't be fair to make me any promises, but, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside, but when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should get back. I don't want to make worry Monica, you know? <laughs> Good luck with that. She's going to see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sayori hops to her feet. <laughs> she clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Uh, uh, well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try and hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the classroom. Ah! You're back! Good timing. I was just about ready to start with our showing our poems. Eh? Sayori, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about. I was playing with crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. <sighs> well, anyway. Were you able to find everything you needed? Wow, what a bitch. She didn't even ask if she was alright. Uh, I have it right. Uh, Sayori frantically glances around herself. I, I forgot all the stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Royd. Ah, well, Sayori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure! Yeah, that? Ah, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Who should I show my poem to first? Uh, well, we just shared a moment, so say Ori first. Royd, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Uh, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean... You're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? <laughs> no way. Not even Nasuki? Well, I guess Nasuki's least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well... I guess I'll just be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. <laughs> Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're really expressive 
person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is I, I can feel more feelings through you than I can feel through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting me in the business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try and explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. Great on the bump. <laughs> hey! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Hmm. Maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Royd, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. Wow, my dick. <laughs> Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. <laughs> I broke my pencil. Sorry, hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. So, 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 sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk beside herself to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down. Yeah, yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry about it. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine are rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends, each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow off, I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time's elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my lot front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want bottles that much? I frantically pulled them in front of the shelf, one off to the other. Holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards, all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, echo, echo 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 
inside my head. <laughs> Holy crap! So, did you really write this? Of course I did! Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, and you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yay! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Oh god, please tell me that. Oh. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sorry's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of, one of those things. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, Yori. <laughs> Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Royd. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yori. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire my fellow writers. You know, you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poems to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid, just to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write the, the things down you see in here. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see your mind. <laughs> it's very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was cut off by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ordinary human. What strange tendencies? I gave the raccoon a piece of my bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The exciting beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon. My... What? An urge. I'm not used to calligraphy. Give me a break. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more of light of cutting knife. The very same light that it glistens off the edge of the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently. So my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows its excitement. A rush of blood. A rush of blood? Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. I... That does not sound like she's cutting bread. I... Uh... 
this whole thing sounds like a huge cover-up story for self-harm. <laughs> um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imaginary and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. I just said it! I literally just said it! Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. Yeah, like, well, what does that say about me if I instantly think of self harm? I wanted to express the way it feels more for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. In those sorts of things, I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Royd? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other around our individualities, even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I wouldn't probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, let's do Nasuki. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say that it's any better either. <sighs> hmm. What's foo what? Ah. Well, anything that isn't a train wreck I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey! What makes you... Wait a minute. Maybe that was a compliment? <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me one day. That's, uh, something tells me that Suki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh? You think so? Yeah. Well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sorry has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so... Uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary, fucking bastard. But I think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she'll probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say that we take care of each other in our own way. Yeah, Natsuki, take it. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favourite love song. Every time she sings the chorus, my heart will pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and, I took, and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has lots of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter 
if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Well, that's just prejudicing someone for one aspect of the life. So, don't be such a... Well, a bitch. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realise how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they make fun of you or think less of you but that just makes people stupid who cares about someone what who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy that's literally what I just said <sighs> I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things huh that's funny Yuri wrote about something similar today huh did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something f similar to you. That people should just make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Hey! Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh. It's not like I would judge her or anything. Nasuki has trouble finding words. I I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. She feels insecure about her weird behaviours and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the messages in your poem. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions, that's important. But I want to make people think it, not just feel it. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, so look forward to it. Whose poem? Oh, it's a big choice. I wonder who it's going to be. Hi again, Royd. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that, as long as it's not going to be bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. What? Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that you wrote. You two will like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But you and Asuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me when every now and then too. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Ah, no, it's nothing like that. Jeez. 
<sighs> it's so tiring having four women after me. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway. You want to read my poem for now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's have a little gander. Okay, save me. The colours, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colours. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. Why should you mention red, green, blue? Because for anyone who's not in the technology space, red, green, blue is what makes up every single screen to make any colour like over here, over here, over here. It's all RGB. Why would she mention that? Okay. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violently grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. What, does she know my channel now? Sine, cosine, tangent. There's more f freaking technology and mass based stuff. Because you've got RGB up here and now you've got... Uh, okay. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless... Meaning... Load me. Okay, that's three technology things now. What the hell? Hmm. It's even more I've shot than your last one. <laughs> I guess it's just a way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the, a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing my space on the paper. Choosing where and how the space works can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't about asking the question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult situation. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Hey, Why are you saying that? You'll never know when it might need to change your map hey or when something unexpected map okay some someone's gotta either die or a monster's gonna come in or the building's gonna blow <sighs> wait is this even a tip about writing what am I even talking about <laughs> that's my advice for today thanks for listening okay everyone we're all about done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today. So if everyone could sit at the front room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. <sighs> do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for this event. Ah, sorry. 
I thought I heard you about... I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing! Performing? P um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. So is putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare it ahead of time. Hee <laughs> hee! Sayori, who's been colouring... Spelt wrong again. Goddamn Americans. It's got a U in it, but it just means you are morons for spelling it wrong. Holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You... You didn't... Already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh... Well, I did. Did you really think it's that bad and bad idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There is no way I am going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I, I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yori shakes her hand in fear. Guys, no Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Nasuki and Yori have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It takes a lot for them. It takes a lot for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But I still think we should have give it our best shot. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start and just put out a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll able to be to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's all about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun! That's right, and it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to have the same feelings and thoughts brought to you here in the first place? I don't know... I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Nasuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me here in no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Nasuki doesn't have any arguments left. Okay. Fine. I guess I'll just have to get over it. Alright! Thanks, Nasuki. What about you, Yori? Yuri dejectedly glances around everyone else's ex <laughs>